Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with the Hutchings Museum and today I am going to be talking about a snake, specifically gopher snakes. Gopher snakes are one of my absolute favorite snake species on earth and it's a snake I grew up with. We used to catch them out in the desert and hold them and, and, and just see them in the wild. Uh, they're really an amazing species but they have a lot of unique things about them. Um, they are a snake that lives in mostly desert environments, very harsh deserts in fact. But they'll hunt just about any species of rodent. They'll hunt kangaroo rats and mice and, and gophers, hence the term gopher snake. So they're very valuable and helpful to humanity because they actually will take care of a lot of the rodent population. So if you see a gopher snake in your area, just think about how many mice that guy is eating that otherwise would be in your house. Now gopher snakes look quite a bit like a rattlesnake. Their coloration, their patterns very much does look like a Great Basin rattlesnake or a Western Diamondback. A lot of rattlesnakes have very similar patterning. They use that to their advantage because the gopher snake is not particularly aggressive. They don't, they don't like to go and attack people. So they want you to mistake them for being a rattlesnake. Not just you, but also other predators. There's many other animals that will eat them. Hawks and eagles will eat them, badgers, foxes, coyotes, mink, will all try to target the species. It's fast, but not nearly as fast as certain other Utah snake species like the racer. Gopher snakes, not very fast, spend most of their time on the ground, and so they're in danger of being attacked. And so what they do, if something is going to attack them, is they have a couple of things. First of all, they hope that their coloration is enough as it is. Second of all, um, if you're looking at a snake's head, most non-venomous snakes in the United States have a very narrow head, and most venomous snakes have a very uh, diamond-shaped head. So what these gopher snakes will do is they'll push out their jaws and flatten their face outward to make their head have an appearance like a venomous snake, like a rattlesnake. They'll also uh, coil up and assume the po same posture, the strike posture that a rattlesnake will do. And so they'll do that and then they'll lunge at you. They typically will not bite you. They'll lunge and just bump into you <laughs> because if they bite you, they might get hooked in and then you might turn around and eat them. So they just kind of try to strike and butt you away as a defense and usually it works. But another thing they would do is they also will rattle their tail, which is kind of odd because they don't have a rattle. But they will do that coiling position and look super aggressive and hiss at you and they'll rattle their tail. That just that motion is enough to make most animals be like, whoa, wait a minute, that, that looks like a rattlesnake. I'm, I'm not going to mess with it and back off. So it's a survival strategy that can work really, really well. And cobra snakes just seem built to know how to do that. Now there's multiple subspecies of gopher snakes around the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And the kind we have here in Utah is usually the palest. Uh, usually they're kind of two colors. Usually they're more pale on the back and more kind of reddish, uh, brownish on the front. But here in Northern Utah and in Central Utah, they're very pale to match our silty grounds that we have. But if you go down near like Moab, Utah and some of those red rock country areas, they are far more red, again, to blend in with the rocks. So the kind of the strategy in nature is if a predator is going to attack you, the best defense is to not get attacked in the first place. So if you can blend in with your surroundings, great. You never are found. Then if somebody does find you, you got to have a backup plan. And that is where the gopher snake then will start to do these kind of mimicry of a rattlesnake to try to prevent you from getting eaten. Now they're not at the top of the food chain. They're right in the middle. So they eat a whole lot of species of rodents and lizards and, and things like that. But there is a whole range of predators that also eat them. So they're an, a very important part of the ecosystem. But they actually make very good pets. There is actually a whole thriving pet industry that captive breeds these. Now one of the favorites, there's a subspecies of gopher snake called a bull snake, which is the biggest and the thickest and most powerful of the gopher snake family. And it can be up to eight feet long and it can get to be a body about that big around. So they're very, they can get very large. They're typically the most aggressive and the most likely to hiss at you. They, that's where, that's why sometimes they're called a blow snake because they make a, a blowing hissing sound. But all of the gopher snake family, all of them 
uh, can, be, can be handled and can be trained very easily, and they're not as fast as most other snakes. They're really a lot of fun to work with and see up close. Their patterns are beautiful. Their, their, their markings are exquisite. And again, it's neat to see how convergent evolution has lined them up to look so close and so similar to rattlesnakes. Well, gopher snakes are an important part of our ecosystem. And again, one of my personal favorites, and uh, I hope you get a chance to see one in the wild, uh, but I hope you enjoyed seeing this video and getting a chance to see some up close shots of these beautiful and amazing snakes.